Hey everybody, we're starting early this morning uh, today with God's Word and Jesus Project 365 with Matthew 22 verses 15 to 22. Now we know that the, the Pharisees have been trying to trap Jesus, question his authority, his, his power given by God, uh, the, his teaching, and they couldn't do it. And so here they get to the point of where, uh, you know, they really hated Jesus. And so the Pharisees themselves, the religious leaders, did not go to accuse Jesus or confront him because it was a losing battle. But rather, what they did is they thought, well, Jesus recognizes us, you know, so we'll send our disciples who, you know, and he hasn't seen them, so it'll be, a, it'll be on the down low, it'll be undercover operation, and we'll, we'll have our disciples ask Jesus this question in front of the Herodians and, and the Jewish people. Now here's the thing, is that at this time in Israel, it had been taken over and it was uh, under the rule of Rome. And that a country that was under Roman occupation had to pay a tribute or a tax to Rome. And so you had the Jewish people that didn't like being occupied by Rome and its corrupt uh, rules. And then you had the Herodians, which were Jewish people that believed that, hey, you have to obey Rome. You have to pay their tax. And so what these undercover disciples from the Pharisees, they would bring up this question to Jesus, and no matter if he sided with the Jews who didn't like Rome or the Herodians who, you know, said you had to pay Rome, either, either way that Jesus answered, he would be caught, and they could discredit him, no matter which, which, what answer he gave, or at least that's what they thought. Well... It's interesting because this again reaffirms that Jesus is all-knowing. Not only, uh, he says, knowing their evil intent. So he didn't just like physically recognize him and say, well, you're a pharisaical leader and uh, I, you know, I know you're trying to, to trick me. But rather, he's all-knowing and he knew that you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? He looked at their hearts and he knew. He knew their thoughts and their mind. Anyway, he says, uh, show me the coin that is used for paying the tax. Because that's what they're asking. Do we pay taxes to Caesar or not? Anyway, he says, whose portrait is it and whose inscription? Caesar's, they answered. And then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. Because when you speak the truth, you can't say anything else. Because if you try to force a false assumption or a lie or an error or something like that, it's the leaven. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show evidence in that it's going to cause problems throughout that entire loaf. So they had to go away. <laughs> Jesus wins again. Now, how do, we, how do we apply this passage to our lives? Well, we talk about, you know, who do we pay tribute to? Are we paying tribute to the world in how we spend our time and what we spend our time thinking about? What about our actions and the things that we do? Is it more for the world or is it more for God and doing His will and His good works? That's, that's, a, that's a hard word indeed. But the thing is, is if we repent and confess and follow Jesus and we, de we deny ourselves, pick up our cross and all that stuff, and we continue walking that narrow road of salvation, guess what? It, it's a lot easier with Jesus when we abide in him and he abides in us. But if, if we're to the point of where we're trying to have dual citizenship, in other words, we want to be part way in the world and part of us needs to be in God, that's double-minded. That's being a dual citizen. But God says, you have one Father, and our citizenship is not here on earth. So for those people that say, you know, that are, and this is going to make some people mad in the Patriot movement, movement, that, you know, oh, well, you know, the Democrats are, are wrong and are going against the Constitution. We need to have Republicans, or we need to have a Tea Party or a Constitutionalist, or or independent, or, you know, whatever the flavor of the week is, guess what? The world's going to do what it's going to do. It's going to continue to go after the cravings of the flesh, and in this world, which is run by Satan, he will oblige them. Broad is the road that leads to destruction, 
but narrow is the path that leads to salvation, and that's, that's with Jesus Christ. The problem is, you're going to have to lay down everything. Either you're, you're going to have to get your priorities straight, which means God, family, neighbors, and, you know, that whole deal. But when it comes to the world, you're going to have to get to the point in your Christian walk and where you mature and you see and you understand that I am supposed to be submitted to God 100% just as Jesus was submitted to God 100% even to the point of laying his own life down to be obedient to the Father. Because the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. It doesn't make sense to us why God would love us in the first place. But what we can see is that we are to pay tribute to God with our lives. And we can't mix up that tribute and say, well, I'm going to give 20% give to God and then 80% to the world. We can't give 50-50. God's standard is perfection. We are to submit to him. There is no percentage there. We are to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith, not car compartmentalize our, our religious and God area and then the other areas that deal with the world. This is hard. This is the meat of God's word when you apply it to yourself because, you know, usually people say that you're harder on yourself than others. But you know what, that's not, it's sort of true, but God is ultimately more harder on us because his standard is perfection. He is a holy God. He's good, he's righteous, he's just, and he's also loving. So when God's word, what we see here, we need to ask ourselves, who are we paying tribute to and what are we paying? Is it just lip service? So that way we can continue to walk in the ways of the world? Or are we truly paying back and following Jesus Christ? I don't want to say paying back because, I mean, that's, that's, that's a wrong choice of words. But, I mean, there's nothing that we can do to pay back what Jesus has done for us. Because his death on the cross is priceless. There's nothing that we can do. It doesn't make sense. If, and we all fall short of his standard. But God doesn't call us to do great and wondrous things, to make churches that have hundreds of thousands of people, or to be successful, or to be... That's not what it's all about. He just calls us to be obedient to Him, regardless of the results. And that the whole focus is on Jesus Christ, being in Him, Him in us, and growing in that relationship with Him. That's what it's all about. Um, for some people, this, this could be a hard message because they still want to pay tribute to the world. They still want to pay tribute to Caesar instead of realizing and walking and being obedient as a citizen of heaven and eventually a son and daughter of God. So anyway, that's a... It's kind of a hard passage, but just ask God for wisdom to open up his word, to open up your heart, to open up his truth that the Holy Spirit would lead you into all truth. And the great thing is, is that we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never changes. He's holy, he's just, he's right, he's good, and he's loving. And he's given us his word and for everything so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But the problem is we're not going to have it abundantly like the world thinks, but we're going to have peace and joy and all those things that passes all understanding as we go through fiery trials and tribulations until he calls us home or he returns. So anyway, that's it. I only got a few seconds left. And uh, that's my two cents on Matthew 22, verses 15 to 22. So take care. God bless. Peace.